Be good. <laughs> hey, sweetie. I'll let you out in a minute. Good morning guys. So it's gonna be a little bit noisy in the barn. It's milking time. We've got some hungry babies who haven't had a chance to see their mama all night. So in this video, we're gonna do a little bit of a dairy goat update, show you who we're currently milking, who we're gonna stop milking soon, and exactly how much milk we're getting. So first up here is Christine. Christine is a seven-year-old La Mancha Doe that I actually bought from a friend about 18 months ago. And in March, Christine delivered one beautiful baby girl. Now in the past, Christine has delivered multiple kids and she has put up to a gallon a day of milk in the pail. I can tell you right now, we are not getting that out of Christine. I think part of it is the fact that she had just one baby when she gave birth. That one baby is a doling, doling. Okay. Oh my gosh! Really? That one baby is a girl and girls just don't put as much demand on the other as boys. So I do what I can by massaging her udder while I'm milking. I still don't get a whole ton, but it's definitely worth doing still. So. Just about two and a half cups from a La Mancha. That's really, really not a lot. You were born survivor And you'll never find yourself in love You're wise enough I got troubles I got I'm my worst enemy But I still got a lot to give So I said, hey, don't you wanna come? Come and run away with me Hey, won't you come, won't you come? And sit by a chance, don't you wanna pay? Now that we've got the rest of the girls in here, next up is Schwenli. And Schwenli is a Kiko Nubian cross that we bought in the middle of 2020. This is her second time freshening and Schwenli delivered two beautiful boys for us. And those beautiful boys are out on pasture right now eating lots and lots of grass and we will be utilizing them for their meat. The Kiko part of her should deliver lots of great meat goats for us, and the Nubian part should give us lots of milk. She really hasn't disappointed. Shenley actually gave birth to her last batch of kids on Christmas, so it's been a good five months since she freshened. <laughs> Looks like four cups plus about an inch of foam for Schwenli. That foam will settle out and probably equate to about another quarter cup. So we're gonna call it four and a quarter cups for Schwenli. Over here, this is Eidolin, but before we milk her, I'm gonna go ahead and feed the other monsters. the big goats would never let them eat. And I wanna make sure they're getting a little bit of something. For my smaller Nigerians, I have this cute little tiny pail. I love it. And Eidolin is a first freshener. Because of that, you're gonna notice that she's a lot more antsy than some of my other goats that I've had on the sand today. First freshener means that this is her first time coming into milk after her first time having a baby. She delivered an adorable little baby that we named Dinky at the end of March. Dinky has been recently weaned and for a first freshener, Eidolin has been putting quite a lot in the pail for her size, her breed, and the number of kids she had. I've been really, really impressed. 
If I didn't have these hobbles on her legs, she would be kicking the pail over and it would just be a wreck. The hobbles are there really just to teach them what's expected of them on the milking stand. It doesn't hurt them any. It just acts basically as extra hands to keep their legs put while I'm trying to milk them. Well, cup and a half with a little bit of foam. So not exactly what I'm getting from my La Mancha, but considering their size difference, the fact that Eidolon is a first freshener and oftentimes first fresheners don't have a lot of udder capacity. In Christine's defense, she is still nursing a rather ravenous baby full time still, and she's not. Come on, baby. This little doling here. Her name is Pesky, and Pesky has a vastly different udder than Eidolon does. I'm not even sure if you can tell. You'll probably be able to tell while I'm milking, but her teats are significantly smaller. Pesky definitely stands better than Eidolon does, but I have been milking Pesky longer than I've been milking Eidolon, so Pesky's more used to the routine. While milking such tiny teats, I'm basically just doing this motion. I can't put more than about just my thumb and one finger into it, or I'm gonna spray it all over myself. Pesky actually delivered a single doling, I think in February. All I remember is that she did it all on her own overnight when it was 16 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Just as much as Eidolon, cup and a half. This beautiful little lady here is Mayhem, and Mayhem delivered beautiful twin dolings sometime in the midwinter. I think it was January, but I'll have to check my notes. Mayhem is also a first freshener, and she also has been an excellent mother. She still does have one baby on her, Boba, the little doling that we kept out of her and Havoc. Mayhem here is actually out of my doe, Margot, who we're gonna be milking next. And Margot, for her size, easily is my best milker. And she may be my best milker overall, even with the La Manchas included. So it was really, really important to me to retain some dolings out of this line. And so far, I've been really, really impressed. I was re-watching her birth video the other day, and when she gave birth, her udder was pink, and it's turning dark. Mayhem and Pesky, the previous goat that I just milked, they're actually gonna go back in with the buck in a couple weeks, and when I put my does back into be bred, I don't continue milking them. Technically, you can milk a doe up until she's about three months bred with no issues, but we do a little bit of an intensive breeding schedule. They basically give birth right around every 10 months, and because we ask so much of them as far as production in that respect, I don't ask that much of them as far as milk goes. So we'll only be milking Mayhem and Pesky for a couple weeks longer. Whoop. Wow, that's actually two and a quarter cups with a little bit of foam. So once the foam settles out, we will have probably gotten just as much milk out of Mayhem, the first freshener, as we did out of Christine. Poor Christine, I feel like I'm trash talking her in this video. But I did have higher hopes for the La Mancha breed, and I'm sure it's not the breed itself. I know some very, very high producing La Manchas, but Christine's been through a lot. It actually took four years to get her rebred. I'm really excited that we were able to get Elpis out of her, and if that's really all I get out of her, I'm gonna be happy. You ready, Mar? Did we save the best for last? You ready? I think if all dairy goat owners were honest with themselves, they could admit that they have a favorite. Margot is my favorite for sure. Look at this. <laughs> 
Margot gave birth on Christmas Day, same day as Schwenli did, to two gorgeous baby boys. They've actually been running in this pasture with Margot and the rest of the dairy goats. So I've been having to put some tape over her teats so that her babies can't nurse. They don't need it. And it's been super effective. <laughs> So I bought Margo from my friend here locally who actually rescued Margo from an abusive situation. I don't know a lot about her history, including her breed. We are guessing that she is part Nigerian, but this udder is not a Nigerian udder. I don't know where she gets this udder, but I'm thankful for it. I'm not sure if it's coming in through the camera, but this teat has a wider orifice than this one. So I'm milking them at the same time, but inevitably this side is going to drain faster than this side, just because the orifice is so much smaller, the milk has a hard time draining out as quickly. Margot is actually the reason that I got into hand milking. When I first got dairy goats, um, I actually machine milked. I bought my first dairy goats from Living Traditions Homestead and Sarah actually used a brake bleeder pump milker to milk out her goats. So because I bought goats from her and her goats were already used to that, that's what I did. I made the same kind of pump that they have. I hated it. So I started using an old human breast pump that I had from when I had babies. And that worked gloriously until I bought Margot and Margot would not respond to the pump. And I bought her in milk. So she had to be milked. Her udder was ginormous. So I learned how to hand milk started hand milking Margot, began hand milking the rest of the girls, and I've never looked back. I really enjoy it. So milking is faster with your hands, in my opinion. It takes far less dishes, which is always a win. When you're homesteading, dishes just never end. And when you've got your hands on your dough's udder every day, you're able to tell subtle changes when something is wrong. Remember how I told you one of Margie's teats always sprays out so much more milk so much faster than the other? The other day, that wasn't happening. So milk was coming out probably at the exact same rate as came out of the other teat, but I knew, because I had hand milked her so much in the past, that something wasn't right. When you're milking by hand, you can feel the milk really rushing out of the teat from under your hand. You get a sense for what's normal, and this wasn't normal. She had a clog. So I was able to work the clog free, much to her dismay. And I left the teat tape off of her teats the whole rest of that day so that her babies could nurse and keep that teat clear. So because of that situation, it didn't turn into something worse for Margot, and I'm really grateful for that. This is just medical tape. At first, I was using the whole three inch span on each teat, but now that her babies are a lot less aggressive in trying to nurse, I can actually save some tape by splitting it in half like that and using just a half piece per teat. There we go. Now the tap is shut off for the babies and we'll be able to milk again in the morning. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, I do only milk once a day. So the amount of milk that we're getting, if I were to milk twice a day, I could probably increase our milk volume in the pail by about 30%. I don't enjoy milking in the evenings. I feel like it ties me to the home too much. I love being home, I love milking, but I don't wanna be tied to it that hard. If we want to go somewhere for the evening, be out extra long, it gives me that opportunity. The first year that I was milking, I actually was milking twice a day because I felt like I had to or my goats were gonna get sick and I missed out on a lot of things like on 4th of July I had to come home early and milk and it's kind of a letdown to have to do that no pun intended whoa that wasp I swear to God I'm pretty sure there's a net wasp nest underneath my milking stand here five cups plus about two inches of foam off of Margot. When that settles out, we're gonna look at almost six cups of milk out of Margot, and that is really, really, really impressive for her size.
We've already milked Shvenli, but Shvenli's gotten into a routine where when I'm done milking everyone, she gets to come back in and clean up what's left in this feed bin here. Not my finger. Are your girls ready to come out? Come on. Look at this baby bunny. He's <laughs> so cute. Oh. This playlist up here shows all of the goat births that I've been able to attend and record. And this video down here, it's a little bit older, but it's a good one. It explains our once a day milking schedule and why we love it so much. You're cute. Look at his mustache. Do you see it? <laughs> Isn't his mustache cute? <laughs> 